Yeah. And I steer people that direction, but you know, you're saying there's so many things out there, but that's also an advantage, right? Because if you try something and it doesn't work for you, ditch it. Yeah. You know, like done with that. Okay. It doesn't work. Move on. Right. And that's why I tell patients if I'm not, if I'm not creating change and, you know, a couple appointments, it's like we either have to reset and reevaluate yeah. what we're doing here yeah. or like move on. Dr. John Steen, welcome to the It's Not That Deep podcast. Thanks, man. It's really sure. nice to have you here, man. Um, you're a super interesting guy with an absolute incredible resume, super badass. Uh, you gave me a little blurb before, and you, oh, man, you're the founder of Fortis. Is that how, how you say it? Yeah. Fortis Spine and Sport, where you focus on sports performance optimization, functional movement rehabilitation. And a bunch of cutting edge and really innovative uh, techniques that you've been able to p apply to, um, you know, helping rehab professional athletes in the CFL, NFL, uh, NHL, Team Canada, you know, CrossFit athletes, and so much more. Um, you've been in the health industry for over 18 years, and honestly, we could sit here like for three hours and just list off your accolades. Um, and, and we'll, we'll, do that. <laughs> we'll get into a lot of the things you do, but man, I just want to dive in right away and start talking about, uh, let's, let, let's give people a little bit of a backstory. Let's talk about who you are, your backstory, how you got into this world and yeah, let's just take it back to the beginning, man. No, that's good, man. And first of all, like seriously, thank you for having me on. Oh, I, absolutely. I appreciate dude. it. And, uh, I, I I hope to have a good time tonight. Obviously, we're gonna, we've already been shooting the shit there, so we'll we'll uh, we'll kick it back into some of those topics. Um, but uh, to answer your question, like the thing that brought me to what I'm doing now, so I am a, a chiropractor, a chiropractic physician, um, and to the average person that essentially says I crack necks, <laughs> so uh, necks and backs, right? But uh, I, I've taken to a, a bit of a different place now. Um, started out with the idea when, when I went into school, I started out with the idea that, Hey, yes, I'm going to chiropractic school, but I'm going to expand on that because mm. my personal experience is through injury and, uh, through trying to perform better, uh, athletically was, it, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing process obviously, but, uh, just trying to nail that down. I, I knew there was more to it than just cracking necks. So, Absolutely. so, so that's what I wanted to, uh, address and, my entrance into this world, health and fitness world. Uh, so as a personal trainer with, with one of the big box companies there for a number of years and, you know, even started out cleaning up weights around the gym and that kind of thing. So exposure was high there. Um, and, uh, essentially just went through the system, uh, building up clientele, um, doing my thing as a trainer. How old were you when you got started into uh, it? At, like as an actual trainer, I think to do your certification, you need to be 18, but uh, I was being groomed for it prior to by, by a couple mentors. So, right. And you were playing rugby at the time. Yeah. So, so rugby was, was my sport it's basically entering into it just before high school and, and gained some exposure there. Um, and that was a big part of your life. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Big part. And, and definitely it's something that kind of steered me towards the injury side of things. I, I was never a, a big individual per se. Um, so, you know, lots of training on the, on the personal training side and then going towards injury when, when I was dealing with that myself. Talk about that. Talk about your injury, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I guess big picture here, like, the reason why I went into the 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 health field as a Cairo and and as a as a health professional was from my own experiences with injury. So I for whatever reason, well reasons that I know now, um, I was oftentimes injured. So mm -hmm. I was dealing with a lot of this stuff. So you know, really always in seeing a Cairo, seeing a physio. Um, different different people uh, involved in my rehab yeah. when I was young even. So 
um, that kind of just spawned the whole thing. And it was really when I broke my hand uh, in grade nine. Um, mm-hmm. We won't talk about how that happened, but let's just say <laughs> it was a, uh, uh, a schoolyard thing. A little rough house. Yeah, a little rough house. And you got it, man. <laughs> um, and so it, it was that. And I was very into, you know, I was looking at the x-rays and I was very curious about how, uh, how all things went together. And the orthopedic surgeon basically said, hey, we're just going to pull on your hand till it breaks and, and then uh, put you in a cast for a while. I was like, oh. <laughs> all right that's cool that's the only option here <laughs> yeah right <laughs> okay so fast forward a couple of years and and uh playing rugby in uh in university and had a pretty significant injury i shattered my leg like pieces like nasty stuff and this was um, at acadia yeah so i was at acadia um it was actually in the off season so i was playing back in ottawa so okay um but it was in my time at school right um so we uh so i had some intervention on that they put a nice big rod in my leg and grafted Jeez. grafted pieces around was that was this so. your femur or a tibia, tibia okay. and fibula so they oh didn't boy. they didn't do anything with the fibula they just kind of left it and cast it and let it uh, do its thing but uh it, it was really that that started making me thinking about stuff. So I, I kind of got away from, from health for a while. I was a little, um, uh, I was a little upset, uh, with many aspects of my life when, when that went down. Well, absolutely, man. Yeah. I, at that age, it, yeah. it's such a part of your identity. That's it, man. Yeah. You're, you're playing rugby you at it. this level. You think, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you or put words in no, your mouth, you're doing but it. You, you think you want to go to the next level with it. And you're starting to think like, yo, man, like, I'm good at this, I got this going on, blah, blah, blah. And then you get this injury and you start to question everything. It's such a common story. That's it. And it is a common story, right? You know, uh, teenager, early 20s with an injury. And, and I see this a ton now where people have their first injury. And the mental health uh, aspect of that really, really messes with people, even more than the injury does. It's huge. Yeah. So you you have this injury and you take this little break. And then what was it that made you decide, you know what, let me get back into this. Let me, let me go full tilt into the health and fitness world and, you know, pursue your doctorate and, and, and everything. Tell me the story. Give me the, give me the, give me the cliff notes, but also tell us the story, man. So basically worked on the, uh, worked on the injury and the physiotherapist I was working with essentially said, Hey, this is about the best that we can get it. Um, and for me, that was kind of unacceptable. Um, so it's been a bit of a labor of love trying to get it to a, a much better place. But, you know, for, for everyone out there listening, like if you have some pain, if you have some chronic injury going on, it can always be better. Mm-hmm. There's always something else you can do. And, and you just have to keep hunting for that thing. That's so true, man. And, and you know, I can personally relate having been injured so many times playing football in my life. And always, you know, having first to go to the doctor, they like take some Advil, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> How many times has that worked out? Rice. You, yeah. How many times have you heard rice quoted, you know? And then you realize the injury is worse. Go back to the doctor, you get referred to a physio. Mm-hmm. You go to the physio, they give you a few exercises to do. They might massage the area or even put some cups on it or something. Mm-hmm. You know, make you feel like they're really doing something for that 40 minutes or whatever you're with them. And then oftentimes, and this is this is my personal experience, I don't want to throw all physiotherapists under the bus, but this has just been my personal experience, is oftentimes you're left unsatisfied with what their response or, or their solution to your injury is. You're like, like, how can I get back to 100%? Well, there you go. And, and I was that same person, right? So I, I was not happy with the outcome. Um, and luckily I had some education backing me up and I had some resources to, to dive into things a little bit more. Right. Because for people listening, like, let's take it back a little bit. You studied kinesiology, correct? Yeah. yeah. So kin and focused on exercise phys when I was in, uh, when I was at Acadia. Right. Um, and, uh, and then it took a number of years off, uh, five years, uh, in between that and doing my doctorate. So, uh, that, that was the time of growth, I guess, let's call it. Right. But uh, in, in terms of bringing the, the, the injury thing together, it's, it's just like you, you can never be happy with a, a subpar outcome, right? Um, and so really to, to bring it all together, you have to start taking a different approach to things. 
And so that's what I try and do with patients. You know, everything that I've been through where I've been like, okay, you know, I can get my neck cracked for this injury, but you know what, it, it doesn't work for this one. So what do I do for this one? So then I would go, go on and take another course and be like, oh, hey, you know what, this is going to be something that can help me out with this aspect of it, whether it's, you know, a soft tissue course, ART was the, the big thing at the, t- at the time, active release techniques. So go and rock that out. And then it's like, hey, now I can fix this aspect of this injury. But what about this? So then I go and take acupuncture, you know, so adding all these different things to the mix. And, and I just found um, the acupuncture course that I took was just unbelievable. Like that just game changer 100 percent for me right? because it, it started to open up the idea that, you know, everything's not a reductionist method. So like we're talking about here's everything here. Here's your problem. And if we want to isolate the aspects of that problem, we start narrowing them down into little pieces, i.e. reductionism. So if we take the pain part of this and say, hey, we're going to treat the pain with meds, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about, you know, jumping on the... the Ibuprofen, whatever they tell you to take. So you take care of the pain with this side of it. And you know what? You take care of the the scar tissue with this part of it and you start to isolate it like that. Like, you know, that, that methodology works, but... I, I really prescribe more to the systems approach, it's called. So we're, we're trying to look at, hey, how does all this work together? So that's where acupuncture is kind of cool because you can throw a needle in anywhere and get 400% increase in blood flow to that area. Mm. So a lot of times blood flow restriction is, is a huge problem with injury, right? Yep. So that's where the scar tissue and all that stuff. So if we can stir that up and get blood flow there, we can actually heal that injury a lot better. Uh, we can also influence the nervous system with these needles, right? So I'm not talking about like chi acupuncture kind of stuff, even though not there's... Uh, not ancient Chinese... Uh, well, so there's some similarities between that and like kind of more of that westernized version. Um, but uh, really we're, what we're trying to do is influence the nervous system directly. So if we're talking about, you know, you said you had a shoulder injury. Absolutely. So if I'm, in, if I'm trying to work on that, I'm trying to influence nerves that directly go to the shoulder versus, you know, stuff that's a little more distal. We'll still play with some of those, those uh, oriental medicine uh, points, but um, really just trying to get in and figure out, hey, what is the big picture here? And it's really interesting. The more I dive into cases the more I find what we call like metabolic issues, right? So metabolic issues would be like, hey, you don't get enough sleep, Hmm. you know? So if you're not getting enough sleep, well, your hormones are going to be all messed up. You're not necessarily going to be healing at the, uh, at the right rate. And it affects so much of your life. Well, that's it. And, and again, think about, you know, a teenager, early twenties, uh, you know, where we have these injuries that, that, kind of mess with our identity and stuff well what else is going on in that time you know people are out partying or they're being teenagers and (laughs) young 20 year olds so there's a lot of influence there on on what's going on with the injuries so with the systems approach then you're kind of look it's almost like a a holistic way of looking at it you're kind of looking at everything the sleep the nutrition you know what you're putting into your body your gut how you're moving your mobility that's it. it it encompasses everything so you, how deep do you go? I mean, I know it's not that deep, right? But how deep do you... We're going to go deep on it. <laughs> we're going to go deep in this podcast. Well, well, that's it. Like, you know, you started with some basic parameters. So yeah. looking at, like, nutrition and, and, you know, is this person getting what they need to fuel their body? And, you know, what if they've got an injury that's chronic? Maybe there is a deficiency there. Mm. So we can dive into that too, right? right. Um, so just looking at general... Um, so. Why don't you take me as an example? Yeah, Sorry well, that's good. Let's no, say no, I good. come in, I come in and I see you. Hey, doc, got my torn labrum here. One orthopedic surgeon's telling me I got to do surgery. It's my only it. option. Yeah. yeah. And phys- I tried the physio, didn't work out. What are you doing for me? What are you looking at? Let's the beginning to end. Well, that's it, right? And and so you're you're talking about a torn labrum. So I don't have a labrum left in my body, right? Wow. You, you've got four. You've got shoulders, hips. Like there, I I know for a fact that two of them are surgical right now, based mm. on MRI findings. But that diagnosis was over five years ago, and so I've opted not to do that. And some people would say you're crazy, like you're going to get arthritis and all that. And to that, I say, hey, guess what? Everybody after 13 years old has arthritis. So. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm just going to be of one it. of those other people's, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the degree of it. But, but really what causes the arthritis is not the torn labrum. It's, it's what actually caused the torn labrum in the first place. Mm. So that imbalance, right? So some people have 
an injury to that shoulder, you know, whatever it is, sports injury, throwing injury, those are, those are pretty common ones. But if you can go back and figure out, Hey, what actually caused this? Is there an imbalance in some of the shoulder musculature? Is there, you know, too much neck, uh, um, upriding? Is there too much neck tension going on? Because it shouldn't happen in a, in in a normal body. It should not happen. That's it. There's something wrong there that's it so i never thought about it that way well that's it so so i try to go back and figure out hey what actually caused this in the first place so if you've got some weakness through a couple different muscles and a couple different planes it's like all right well let's normalize this and you know what for the pain let's figure out why you actually have pain do you have pain because you had this injury when you were you know at your the peak in your life and now your your life seems to have kind of gone downhill a little bit obviously you're doing well but but you know this is what i find in young people right so so trying to get them back you know they lose a piece of themselves they're not on the field with their friends and and you know they're not doing what they want to do and as we mentioned the identity is just totally fucked um so i went through that myself i don't know about you absolutely man yeah yeah and and so that's a hard road and so i i can completely um when I have young people come in, I feel it, you know, like I'm there. So I want to help them even more because I don't want them going through that same sort of uh, mental turmoil that I did. So again, getting back to your thing, I would be looking at nutrition, uh, you know, are you getting enough, your omegas and, you know, all these things that you hear about and it's like, Oh, I should just take these things and people just grab stuff off the drugstore counter. But it's like, no, why? Mm. That's my big thing. No why, mm. you know, it, yeah. it's not the what, it's the why. It's the why. Yeah, it's the why. So, it, and most high school kids or younger kids aren't doing that in the first place. I could tell yeah. you, me personally, big ass bowl of pasta or lasagna or some shit the day before a game. Well, that's it. Eat that, bro. You're good to go because you at that at that age you can eat anything and be bulletproof. I, kind I, of. I used to have McDonald's before football games. Yeah. You know? yeah, I, did I was a shit pizza. I was a <laughs> shitty football player. Though, so there you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Maybe it was the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. Yeah, so you look at the nutrition. So look at the nutrition and and look at sleep. Those are those are big ones. Um, how much how much is an individual training? Mm. How much is an athlete training? So right. if their training is too little or or not enough, then that's going to influence it, right? Maybe they're afraid of getting hurt, so they're not going out and they're not doing those training sessions with their strength coach. Okay. Or inversely, they're still like, oh well, I don't care because I'm used to playing with pain, so I'm just going to keep going. And I I was like that too. My philosophy was if I came out of a game and I wasn't hurting, I didn't play hard enough. So I regret that now, but that's, you know, that's it. Right. And uh, the same, uh, it, it's, it's such a yeah. shitty mentality looking back, but in the moment you're like, I'm not going to be a bitch. I'm not just going to be a little like, you know, I'm that's not, it. I, I got to go out there and just give it my all. And, but now you look back, it's like, dude, I played, I popped it back in sometimes and I yeah. continued the game. Like I would, this is the silliness. I should have the first time it popped out, done for the season. Let me go rehab this properly. But, you know, maybe not done for the dumb. season, but but that's it, right? Like just get get a hold of somebody that knows what the hell they're talking about. Absolutely. And, and instead of, you know, dealing with it later on and and um if you can get in there and correct some of these issues cuz not all things hurt in the first place, right? So the the mentality is if I'm in pain, then there's something that's broken, right? There's there's tons of times where I see things that are low grade pain where it's like a patient comes in to see me and they're like, Oh, I have this knee issue, for example. A lot of a lot of knee issues out there, right? And I say to them, Okay, why? You know, let's let's figure out why. And and sometimes it's an ankle that's causing it, and sometimes it's a hip that's causing it. But because the knee works in only one plane, it flexes and extends. Yeah a lot of times your problem is not going to be there where you have multi-axial joints above and below ankle and hip, right? So, you know, looking at hockey players, for example, um, you know, the the position of the hip is not optimal for hockey, let's be honest. Right. Um, Because it's the way you're skating, right? You're like kind of... I don't know. Yeah, skates are a little weird. So yeah. so it's like any hockey player that I work with, I'm working on hips, hip stability. I'm, I'm working on core stability because the back needs to support and the hip needs to work well. But right? also, I'd, I I would venture to say that 90, 95% of people need work on their hips. Yeah, yeah well, that's it, right? It's about your, your athletic population and then on the other side of it, the sedentary population, mm-hmm. right? If you're sitting all day, you're not moving your hips. And we'll get into all that for sure, dude. I got a whole... <laughs> bunch of questions for that population yeah. but let's continue with this analogy yeah. 
Yeah. So going with that, like if we're trying to get the, the knee better and I'm telling you, you have a hip or an ankle issue, well, then it's, I'm kind of met with this. Well, I came in for a knee problem. And especially when I, I tell them it's the hip on the other side and it's like, what, what are you talking about? So I had one of these the other day and a, a groin injury and I treated the opposite sided hip and, and the patient was just like, I, I trust you, but I really don't understand. And, and so, you know, you try and explain aspects of it, but ultimately we're looking at the whole system here, right? But when I go in and I'm trying to look around at issues, I'm looking at the functional problem. I'm not necessarily looking at where's your pain. Mm. If I'm chasing pain all over the body, and let's say you're not sleeping at night and, and you love your, your Tim Hortons, uh, you know, milkshakes, basically, as mm. I refer to them, where you've got a triple-triple or yeah, something like that, yeah, you know, you're, you're spiking lots of different hormones that are really going to set your system off. Absolutely. So if you're coming in with pain in an area, then I got to figure out why, not what right? You have hip pain, but if I, I feel around on the opposite side and it's more painful, yeah, you may have pain at that area where it's like, hey, I have this, uh, I have this hip flexor tear, or this groin pull, right? And maybe right, right there, but then I go to the other hip and I'm feeling around and like you're jumping off the table with that mm -hmm. hip injury. There's a good chance that, that there's something else going on in the whole system that you have to look for, Yeah. right? And it's not like you could just it's not like a, like a car where you can p plug the thing in and get a full diagnosis. This is exactly what's wrong. Wait, what do you mean we system. can't do that? We, we don't have those things? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Uh, you got me for a second. I'm like, wait, what? There is a thing? But no, like you actually have to have that knowledge and be able to actually go in and, and, and look at it from a system's point of view. And, and the way the healthcare system's set up, it's like you go to this general physician who maybe has... I mean, I, I don't want to talk down on anybody, but they don't have the level of knowledge that specialists do in this field, right? And then, who, which specialist? What specialist do you see? Like, I got lucky once I got to see a sports physio. Yeah. This is a physio who is directly related for sports injuries. Mm -hmm. Even then, couldn't figure, gave me a few band exercises. This was still for the labor? This is for the labor. Yeah, that's, and, and that's it, right? And the... Uh, also, like what you want to do is if you're dealing with something like that, if you're not getting results quick enough, you owe it to yourself to go and pivot and find somebody else, right? Because being just told, hey, it's going to take longer, it's going to take longer. Like I, I see some of these programs and it's like 52 sessions to, to get somebody better. And it blows my mind. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I, I wish I could, uh, you know, I wish it, that Charge my patients had the time. <laughs> well, well, that, but I, I, I wish that my patients had the time to do 52 appointments like when, when do you do that? That's a hell of a lot of time. So because, again, I've been through a lot of these injuries, I'm always trying to get people back as quick as possible. And dealing with pro athletes, like, you have to. There's no choice. Like, nobody wants to be in pain and wants to be in pain in a while. But I find, you know, if you're coming in and your life is your body and you need to get things going, then that needs to happen yesterday. Absolutely. And that means that they're committed and they want to know every single piece of what they can do. Hey, how, how do we look at sleep? How do we look at nutrition and all these other fun little things? Okay. So you look at my nutrition, you look at my sleep and this, that you do an analysis. Do you, what, what do you, do you prescribe something from there or do you now do the whole body work up? Like, tell me what's the next step. Yeah. So it, again, it depends on the why, right? If, if you're, if you just suck and you're just staying up late at night and watching Netflix because like for no reason you feel sorry for yourself or whatever it is, like it's just disconnect that. Mm. So, and sometimes just being told like, Hey, you know what? Staying up late is not the best. You know, there's, there's uh, the blue light glasses that have come up recently and, and I'm a, a bit of an amateur biohacker um, as well, so I'm I'm trying to. I want to go into that. Bro. Yeah, that thing too. Yeah. Sure. So so that's a, a fun one. But I bring that to my practice, right? So we look at things like, are you getting enough sleep? What is enough sleep for for an individual? So and a lot of people were trying to hit that eight hours maybe, mm -hmm. but we have to figure out what works for them. Yeah. And is sleep. A, a factor that's going to help us, right? Right. So, you know, there's a lot of trackers out there and everything these days. I, I have ones that I like a little bit better than others, but yeah. it, there's so many of them out there. It's like, why not use it and just try and figure out, hey, am I in a deficit or, or is this something that, Absolutely. that I can It's something I started doing recently mm -hmm. because I've been getting up a lot earlier, yeah. which means I've had to be going to bed a lot earlier, but that's 
tough for me because I'm kind of a night owl. I like to be up at night and I, I like to be, uh, I find my most creative working time is, is at night. But, you know, if, I, if I'm if i in bed by around 9, 30, 10, and I can get six, awesome. <laughs> six to eight hours of sleep and be up for my 5 o'clock or 4.45, whatever, yeah. I feel great, but You're good, yeah. I can't be guessing because what if I get up three or four times at night or what That's if it. I had a few drinks? Now my sleep's no longer as good or, you know. There you go, right? And it, all these different, like, things that impact, like, how good you feel the next mm-hmm. day. And I've had this app. This app, It's I think it's called Sleep Cycle. I just, yeah. I just lay it down on my phone. Everyone has a smartphone these days. I don't have the next level thing that you have there, <laughs> maybe one day, but... Uh, it tells me. It literally tells me. Yeah, you got seven hours of sleep, eighty-seven percent quality. You woke up at these times, and you can even listen to yourself snore. Like it's a great app. Like, yeah, it's fantastic. But it, like, it tells you. Oh shit! Yeah, I had I had a few beers last night, and I only really got four hours of sleep. Right, and, and I feel yeah. it today. And and some of the apps will even pick up on that, right? So it'll say like, hey, you know, in the last month. The, the nights that you recorded that you had a couple beers before you went to bed, you slept two hours less or, or you woke up uh, this, this rested versus this is where you should be. Your recovery yeah. was less, right? And for a professional athlete and someone whose livelihood depends on their performance, mm-hmm. those two hours can make the difference between, you know, performing at the top of your ability and just average whatever but that's every professional too right like you you know if you're just looking at professionalism in general like Mm -hmm. you want performance yeah like if you're going to work and you want to you want to give a a a quality presentation like you can't be walking in feeling like a bag of shit right absolutely so so this just helps everyone it's there's so many things out there these days that we can just pluck out and you know you can jump through the app store and find a ton of them right but you know uh, to play devil's advocate yeah i'd say i'm just an average person who just you know wants to just do a bit better just a bit better Mm -hmm. there's almost too many things out there yeah and there's almost you're inundated with just too much information out there oh i got it you want me to sleep better diet yeah work out meditate yeah 50 different things you could pretty much spend all day just working on self-improvement which i mean you know i have my opinions on it because i feel like it's very important uh just for how it it leaks into all other facets of your life but for just the everyday person who just wants to improve just sit down and tell them hey get this app hey do this hey do that it's tough man. and i steer people that direction but you know you're saying there's so many things out there but that's also an advantage right because if you try something it doesn't work for you ditch it yeah you know like done with that okay it doesn't work move on right and that's why i tell patients if i'm not if i'm not creating change and you know a couple appointments it's like we either have to reset and reevaluate what we're doing here yeah or like move on so taking my example again i come in i got my injury you see that uh, uh my sleep is okay my nutrition is okay yeah and now we just want to, you know, you want to deal with now the injury and what can I do from there? So, so that's it. So like assess the injury, figure out, Hey, what's really going on. So if we're talking about a shoulder, I'm probably looking at neck. I'm looking at core. I'm looking at areas around what we're actually looking at opposite shoulder. Right. Mm. Cause we're going to compensate. Right. So, so there's uh, there's a saying it's, um, um, pain is, uh, just the lack of compensation just that one more time, right? Mm. So failure to compensate just that one more time. Because if if I reach up and I reach here and it's painful, well, guess what? I can move my body over here and reach here, yeah. right? So we can compensate. And that's what we do over and over and over again. Thousands of times a day. That's it. Think of people bending over to pick something up. I'm yeah. stealing this from that Supple Leopard book. There that, we go, right? That, that I've read. But uh, yeah. uh, Kelly uh, Starrett, yeah. uh, he yeah. talks about how... We our bodies can actually go through take so much shit it's unbelievable before it breaks. That's it. Before it actually says, "Look, I can't do this anymore." Yeah, uh, you can bend over. I see it every day. I see my own parents yep. bending over, full back curved. I'm just like looking at it, like freaking out, like, "What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like hinge the hinge at the hips. Hinge. <laughs> like, what, what's with this? What, what are you doing wrong here? What's going like?" But you know, you, you almost can't like expect everybody to know this stuff. So how right. do you then kind of educate me, the client coming in? And oh, I've always been throwing a football like this. 
I've always been doing it like this. Well, that's it. And I hear that a lot. Well, I always do this. Well, just because you always do it doesn't mean it's the right mm. thing. Right? So, like, it, it's tough with with people that are stuck in like, hey, this is how I want my rehab to go versus like, hey, listen, I'm going to be open to these different ideas on how I'm going to do this. So uh, in season for athletes is is very difficult to try and modify these things because they're pretty stuck in it. Yeah. Um, but off season is the time to do that. So, you know, just going back to trying to get these movement patterns better. So I use, um, I, I've been studying some postdoc work with the Prague School of Rehab mm -hmm. in the Czech Republic. So they're all about developmental kinesiology and how babies move. Right. Um, so babies do it perfectly 85 percent of the time let's say right okay um and so actually can you go in on that a little yeah, bit tell, yeah yeah for me sure about that a bit what, what do you mean by that so there's this body of evidence <clears throat> it's like 50 years they've been researching this okay and uh this again is at the Prague school of rehabilitation and they look at how babies move and how their systems work so they look at eye movements relative to hand movement relative to basically all the coordination so really for them it starts with breathing and bracing okay so i'm, I'm a big advocate of um of breathing techniques um so that's just one of my my pieces that i'll typically give to every patient out there a because it decreases uh, sympathetic tone meaning our our perception of stress our fight or flight response it just brings it down if we get our breath under control and b because we can isolate uh, core musculature by doing that right. so if we can get that working hey that's that's part of the battle first right, right. Um, so, so they go in and they work with that so they literally work with babies with cerebral palsy CP um, which is the ultimate disconnect from mind to muscle right we're dealing with an injury. What are we dealing with? Disconnect mind and muscle in a lot of cases where the, the brain is, or sorry, the, the limb is saying, okay, there's some pain here. Or there's an issue here, sending that signal up to the brain. And then the brain saying, okay, don't, don't use that the way you did. Let's, let's compensate. Mm. Let's do something different. Yeah. So DNS, it's called dynamic neuromuscular stabilization. It's a mouthful. Um, but that, that's essentially going in and, and replacing some of these uh, compensatory movement patterns with more ideal movement patterns that okay. we did, you know, at one point, right? These, these movement patterns are stored in our brains. Nobody teaches a baby to, right. you know, sit up, uh, push up through the, the arms, lift the head, right. roll over, you know, stand up, squat, all whereas, these things. Whereas our experience throughout life has taught us to compensate. That's, or, or, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so DNS is about going back and, and trying to rework some of these patterns. Almost unlearning. Well, relearning, yes. Relearning, or, or, yes, okay. Or, or unlearning the, the broken pattern, if you will, and, and the non-ideal pattern, and kind of going back to what was ideal, because you know what? That roadmap is in our brain because we did it right at one point, or 85% of the time we did, right? And so we go back to that pattern because the roadmap is there, and we use that to normalize the motion, and miraculously, we get rid of pain that way because pain is not just broken mm. right I, I go back to that again like pain is not broken so if you have pain when you move some direction guess what you can move a different way mm. um so just trying to get things working from the whole function of the body is is the key to all this so it's powerful man it is powerful i love it i love it too <laughs> man and, and you know this can apply to so many things you I I definitely will want to come back to just the 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 average population of For sure. of of just you know day to day people who are just working these office jobs and stuff. But you know sticking to the whole athlete thing for now and you know you let's say there's a quarterback he's he's always had this this throwing motion mm -hmm. with his arm. Mm -hmm. All right, he tears his rotator cuff. Yep, and now you're looking at his whole holistic approach or systems approach of, okay, how can we assess this injury from every standpoint, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. How can we deal with the compensations? And then how do you fix the injury from there through the actual comp compensatory? Yeah, yeah, Cause, yeah, cause yeah, that's I'm my, like, it sounds great, but yeah, right. I, like, how do you apply it? How does it apply? Yeah, exactly. So, they'd come in, we would assess them thoroughly. So figure out, okay, 
maybe this individual is not sleeping. Maybe they're having 10 beers a night. So there's that kind of metabolic side of it, right? Or maybe when they're sleeping, their neck is cocked to one side. And, and that's why they're getting extra tension through their shoulder that's lifting the shoulder mm. up and then overloading the tissue, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about Shots it. Shots fired, man. <laughs> Jeez. You don't have to cut so deep, man. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it, though, right? Like, trying to figure out the why is just questions mm -hmm. ask the right questions if you're not listening to your patients what the hell are you doing yeah right and and so that's why i i don't do the five minute crack 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 see you later appointments fill out uh, this quick form well that's it like the the forms will get you some information but you have to see the patient and, and see how they move and and what have you but going back to our quarterback right so why did the tissue get overloaded right mm -hmm. yes they're throwing a lot but why so yeah. is it that they don't have enough protein they don't, they're not getting enough sleep. So there's, again, that side of it. Right. And then you look at the movement pattern. Okay, like maybe they threw out their shoulder because they don't have enough rotation in their opposite hip. Mm. So we, we go, <laughs> Okay. it's deep. Dude, it is hard for me to even, even in talking to you, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I agree with everything you're saying. Yeah. But even then, just the way I think about injuries my whole life is like, no, no, he just messed up his shoulder. Well, that's right. And and I deal with that all but the time. But it's so much that, more than that. Well, that's it, right? Because maybe, you know, we need to plant the, the opposite foot in order to launch it, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're not getting that rotation around that, well, then we're compensating. So there's, there's figuring out, like, where that compensation is and trying to normalize it. You know, okay. if we're dealing with a really badly torn rotator cuff, then that's, you I know, mean, yeah. that can be surgical, obviously, yeah, yeah. but... You know, there's a lot of people out there with rotator cuff injuries that don't even know it. And that's because they're, they haven't hit that threshold or because they've compensated and, and they're still doing it all right. So it's, it's looking at it from all those different approaches and just bringing it all together instead of, Hey, this tissue is this tissue and it's messed up and, and let's, you know, hammer it, crack it, what, you know, put a machine on it, whatever it is, yeah. you know, doing some of that local work does help. But, you know, if I don't fix the opposite hip, if that was the issue or the opposite arm or shoulder or the neck, if I don't address those pieces, then you're probably going to be coming back with, yeah another shoulder injury or injury. some other area, right? Yeah. Because maybe we've cleaned up something around the shoulder, but maybe now it's the elbow that's overloaded. Damn. Damn. This yeah. is so, this is so <laughs> powerful because obviously I'm selfish and I'm just thinking of myself, but I'm like, dude, that's loud. You know how many, how many times like I've been injured, I go to fix the injury yeah, and then it gets re-injured or something else happens again. And I always find myself, you know, thinking sitting down thinking man it's there's got to be more going on there's more to the story there is. how do i get someone to tell me what that is because i don't together. have the knowledge yeah but then how do i get someone to look at the whole thing why does this keep happening again there's yeah. got to be something going on wrong here you see a physio they only do one issue at a time mm -hmm. you know and like oh well you know you injured your shoulder again well Here's these band exercises. Another, another 52 or, appointments. Here's yeah. these 52 yeah. appointments yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We're going to try something new this time. We're going we're gonna to do this uh, electro something. Yeah. We're going to blah, 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 try to reduce the scar tissue, this and that. But it never gets to the root issue of the problem. And so, so many people kind of just accept, oh, I guess I just got a bum shoulder. Guess, guess these are the cards I'm dealt. This is how I got to live life. But you reject that. I and do. So, yeah. so, so I'm, I'm hyped by this. So... <laughs> Uh, what does biohacking mean? Biohacking. Uh, pretty much you're just going in and, and taking pieces of our physiology and we're saying, hey, we want to improve on these things. I don't accept this, so I'm going to go out and look for another piece. So it's exactly what you're talking about. There's so much information out there and some of it is scientifically proven and some of it's not. And I think that's kind of what biohacking is about is looking at okay, this is proven in this way, but not in this way, but how can I utilize to help that myself? So, right. so I, you know, I, I utilize a number of methods for that. So we we're talking about the activity tracker. So that would be a good way of monitoring, you know, sleep recovery, heart rate variability, uh, temperature. So all these factors are going to play into the big picture, right? Um, big thing I'm into right now is, you know, checking out gut biome. 
right? Mm-hmm. So the actual bacteria and what that's doing in your in your gut. And are you digesting food well? Do you have sensitivities to this? And it goes a lot deeper in that. Oh, but all yeah. those methods are, are biohacking methods because we're just trying to get deeper into what's up. Uh, and I mentioned the, the breathing thing. I, I'm big into um, the Wim Hof method. Have you mm, heard, yeah, of Wim Hof? heard of Wim Hof? Have you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, man. So this guy's awesome. Like he's the the Ice Man. He's referred to. So he's got yeah, like a, a crazy amount of world records for everything that has to do with under polar ice caps and like water or yeah. just like I, if you could climb, uh, he's just nuts. Yeah, man. Mount Kilimanjaro <laughs> and shorts. Like yeah. the the guy seems to know what's up, but it's cool because yeah. you know they went and did some research and and they put this guy to the test and he came out on top and and basically he he showed that anybody can alter what's going on in their bodies, right? Their physiology. So from their breathing. Yeah. So I I host some courses with that and. Right. Um, and just really find that you're getting people that are looking for performance optimization pe- and then just everyday people that are like, Hey, I'm not happy with this stress aspect of my life. And stress is something we didn't cover when we were talking about all these different things. But if, if we're saying you're completely stressed out either from, um, you know, day to day stuff or, or, you know, lack of sleep or work or whatever it is like that needs to be addressed. If you're stressed out from stuff in your life, you're probably going to have some pain that, has nothing to do with the actual pain that you're feeling. Yeah, man. So that emotional stuff can be pretty heavy. And and people hold it in, and, and you can almost see it physiologically. People you can. tighten up. That's it. Breath. Yeah. Everything. And, and, and this stuff is all connected and it's so powerful that, you know, I'm sensing a common theme in, in some of the things that, the, that you're saying. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're kind of saying that, like, get the simple things right. Get back to the yeah. fundamentals. Fundamentals, yeah. Get your sleep right. Get your nutrition right. Breathe. Get, <laughs> breathe. <laughs> breathe. Something that like, yeah. actually, I, I've recently found found this because I've, I've been trying to meditate more and try to nice. focus on my breathing a bit more and deep breathing. And I sit in the sauna and, and, and big deep breaths in the morning. And mm-hmm. uh, something I also started doing uh, first thing in the morning is uh, five to ten big deep breaths. Shout out to Tony Greco. He gave me that tip. Uh, I don't know if you heard that on the podcast, but super, super important because we just forget about it. You go, you can go an entire day and not give your breath a single thought. That's right. But then when you do, you realized, oh man, my breathing is labored right now. Like, or, or like they're just short, small breaths. And, and mm-hmm. you, if you've ever gone to a yoga class and they're telling you take a big, deep breath and people will take a deep breath and the instructor will be like, no, 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 take a deep breath. And then you hear it like 10 times more. Like most people are just holding in a lot of baggage and tension and, and it comes down, it starts with the breathing, man. That, that's it. And and that's what the, the whole DNS thing is about in a lot of ways. That is the basis for it. And um, if you're looking at what those, those tight little breaths can do to you, right? If we're breathing up into this area, um, then we can have a lot of neck tension going on. Oh, right? yeah. So if I'm breathing here, then we're going to jack this up. Absolutely. So if you're talking about a shoulder injury, there you go, right? <laughs> yeah. If I'm breathing like this, yeah. well, then I'm really messing with that shoulder. Absolutely. And it can, it yeah. can, it can show in so much other ways too, like your neck muscles could get weaker or stronger in different areas. And you could see, I see me personally, my neck's so much more forward. Really I sit hard. at a computer yeah. all day, internally rotated yeah, shoulders, <laughs> all this stuff, you, you see it. And, you know, this might be a, a good segue now into talking about the everyday person who just yeah. works an office job or a cubicle job or somewhere where they have to be, let's just say for the sake of this discussion, sitting for the most of their day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't have to be, but people tell themselves the story that they have to be and what do we do about that man how do we first change that what's what's the first thing you would tell people in that situation get up move right move move it or lose it 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 really is yeah right so british journal of medicine now is recommending um that people start out with two hours like trying to get up two hours a day on an eight hour day. Yeah. So that means if you're sitting for an eight hour day, you, you're probably doing some damage there. Yeah. And as humans, we think we're at the top of the food chain, right? So we can do whatever the hell we want. 
um, animals are a lot better at listening to their own bodies, right? So if a bird is only meant to eat certain uh, berries and they go and they eat another berry, yeah. they're not going to feel well. No, right? But, so true. But us as humans, like we're like, oh, what, what do you mean? I have back pain? Oh, I have to work. I'm just doing my thing, right? Whereas like an animal probably wouldn't do the same thing over again. We're, yeah. we're kind of dumb like that. It makes complete sense, man. <laughs> like, I don't know why we just kind of get in these habits yeah, and yeah. Tell, us, t- tell ourselves these stories. That's it. And, and so just trying to get up more often is, is helpful. You know, the sit stand desk thing is a, a bit of a craze right now. And, but now we're, we're seeing people where they have the stand up desks, but that's all they're doing. And then they're coming in with knee and hip and back stuff as well. Yeah. So it, it's just a mixture, right? Mm-hmm. We want to mix it up. It, it's just like if you only ate I don't know, grapes, you know, if that was the only thing that you ate, that variability or lack of variability is really going to mess up your system. So, yeah. so I just tell people to, to move, try and get up, go to the water cooler. The more you drink water, the more you got to go to the bathroom. So that's a that's an easy way of kind of tying like one thing into another thing. I like that. So that would be a recommendation. Um, and and the average person is not doing these things, right? They're they're not getting up. They're they're trying to crush their work, and then they're going home and they have pain, so they're tired and they go to bed and they wake up with pain the next day. And there's the cycle just repeating, right? So they're tired, then they work harder, or more coffee and. That's how like a metabolic issue can tie into a, a functional or an anatomical issue because I- I- if we're constantly stressed out and in pain, then we're always going to be compensating for that in some way. Right? Yeah. And there's and, different levels of that. So. And then what what do you do after you're done work? You then go get in your car. Right. And now, yeah. now you're sitting more. And yeah. then what do you do when you go home? You throw on some Netflix. That's it. And then you sleep wrong. And then you get up and you do it all again. And this Repeat. is the majority yeah. of most people's weeks. And yeah. There's simply not enough movement. I, I got one of those sit-stand desks. And nice. I try to do 20 yeah, minutes an hour. Perfect. Um, and, and I usually hit that. And sometimes I even do 30. But like you said, and, and this is something that I've noticed because I've gone to an osteopath. He's nice. like, hey, yeah. your hips are shifted. So one is higher than the other. Mm-hmm. Show me how you stand. I stand up. And I, he's like, when do you sit down? Do you cross one foot over the other? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, sh- show me how you do it. He's like, just what I thought. Yeah. You always do this one over the other. And it actually seems like one of your legs longer than the other. There you go. So I'm always, I'm always leaning on one side. This is just something that you don't think about in your day to day. So I might That's be it. standing up; it might be better for me, but I'm still not. I'm not fixing m- how my body should be in that moment. That's it. It's and just variability, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the, so, how do you expect people to have that self awareness to know what is optimal for their body on on their own? How can you? How can I'm not uh, asking no, no, you no. to answer this. But like, no, kind of like, yeah. how can you know how to change that if you're not even really paying attention to it? Well, you have to just listen to your body, right? And so, so you're talking about going into meditation. That's that's awesome. You know, that is truly just sitting down and quieting things and listening. Hey, what is really going on here? And lives are so crazy these days. It's it's hard to take that moment and pause and just be like, okay, what am I feeling? What yeah. am I actually feeling? Yeah. And and so taking that moment i think that's the hardest part you know you're saying what what do people do if they don't have this awareness well shit have the awareness <laughs> you know take it take a moment yeah. calm everything down and yeah. figure out what's going on you yeah know? man does my stomach hurt when i have that double double <laughs> you know like and it and if it does then what do i do with that information well maybe i stop putting you know the the cream or the milk in yeah man in my coffee with with the sugar right because it's, all those it's things frustrating are frustrating because up. you almost want to like sometimes just grab a purse and tell them, "Hey, your life could be better." Well, that's it. <laughs> but, I, but but that's you can't. What I do. It, it, it's not. It, it's not like the right thing to do. But sometimes yeah. it's like, "Hey, man, I wish uh, I was at a dark point in my life." Um, mm-hmm. You know, when I was in university and after I went through this whole crisis, and no longer playing football. Yeah. No, uh, you no longer have a sport. And yeah. I had gained like over eighty pounds. Wow. Um, that I have since lost, but. At that time, you know, I was just, I was one of those. You don't even think about it. You're like, oh, well, I'm stressed. I got exams. Yeah. 
I better go get a junior chicken yeah, we just on my way home right. and, and some coffee and stay up and grind because I got to get this done yeah. at any cost. Yeah. But what people don't realize is that cost is very big. Yeah, the stress is through the roof. It's not worth that, it a right? lot of the yeah. times, man. And you got to you gotta take a step back. And, and I'm not saying I'm a pro meditator. I literally use an app and do like 10 minutes a day. Perfect. But just... You, you hear, you, you see and recognize a million thoughts mm-hmm. coming into your brain and just being able to calm that down for even a few minutes and just have nothing. Oh, man, it's been so powerful. And I I would recommend that to anybody. It's like start with that. That's it. Just calm things down. Figure out what you really want to do and like try to get this stress that we... It's self-inflicted most of the time. Like right? mm-hmm. We kind of put these things on ourselves and I know people have busy lives and kids and mortgage and this that bunch of things going on bills to pay but just take a step back sometimes and think like you got this one and i like how joe rogan puts it Mm -hmm. meat vehicle you have this one meat vehicle let's take care of it man Mm -hmm. and okay this is this is great man i i have a lot of i have a lot of little questions to ask you um on the same topic of um what can the everyday person do so how do you feel about foam rolling foam rolling uh, how do I feel about it? I think that it's something you can do, but if, if we're really looking at what what you're doing, the the compression uh, through the tissue may or may not be the best thing for you, and and that's what it comes down to, right? You're trying to figure out what's going to work for you. So if it works for you, it works for you. But how do you know if it works for you? Now, that, do you have to keep doing it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's the question, right? Then it if probably you, doesn't work for well, you. Well, well, that's the, the question, right? Is there yeah. something better? But like. If you're happy doing 20 minutes of foam rolling and then feeling the same way an hour later, Mm. well, then that's that's something. But I prescribe more to something where it's like, hey, let's move. Right. So let's move the tissue around and and the the whole DNS like baby movement thing that I was talking about. Right. um, Is more along the lines of, hey, let's get things moving versus like just compress tissue and move it around. All right. you know, the foam rolling thing is good for some, but maybe not for all simply okay. because, Hey, if it works, it works. And like, I, I don't know about you. If you're foam rolling like lats or it bands or something that hurts, right? Like that, well, that's I, painful. I, I like, you could take me as an example. Cause yeah. I could take it. Like yeah. you, you can <laughs> shit on me as much as you want on this podcast. Yeah. Cause I want you to, <laughs> cause if someone listens to this and gets some value from it, I'll never roll my it bands. Cause from what I heard, you can't even, it doesn't do anything. Um, I might do a little bit of hamstrings before I go and do some dynamic zombie walks or something to actually kind of warm up my hamstrings a yep. bit more, loosen them up. Uh, what I do do before every workout, and this is just simply because it feels good to crack every vertebrae, <laughs> is I'll roll my back. Okay, yeah. But I've heard conflicting things on this as well. I've heard some people say, don't do your lower back. I've heard some people say, don't do your back at all. I've heard other people say, no, go for it. Do it every day. If it makes you feel good, it's great. I, you, you're just, That's like, I, like I go back to it. So much information. What do you do? So it comes down to why, mm. right? So if you're, if you're somebody that's pretty self-aware and you're trying to correct um, a problem with, let's say, your upper back, we'll go back to kind of your, your shoulder area, yep. right? It's about knowing, hey, should I be rolling into flexion or should I be rolling into extension? Okay. Right? Because a lot of people are just going to do the same, but not everybody has the same neck. Right. right? You see like two common neck characteristics, if Mm -hmm. you will. You see a lot of flat, flat necks, and typically those are accompanied by some shoulder issues. And then you see more of like the forward head posture um, in the sedentary population, and that's more like neck back kind of things right so one they call upper cross uh, syndrome yeah we can go that direction on exactly and and so it's like yeah you like that eh? (laughs) personal training course oh there you go only thing we learned there you go (laughs) upper cross and lower cross yeah Yeah, so so it's like knowing hey is this what i need because maybe that's not what you need maybe you're somebody you know you like you say you like rolling your hamstrings but maybe you need your hamstrings to support your lower back Mm. and by smashing your hamstrings you're destabilizing your lower back because we do Very need possibly. a certain amount of tension. So it, it, it's tough to really say, hey, like, figure this shit out. Because, yeah. again, there's so much info out there. So much, But man. if something works, it's going to work. Right. Right? Like, if but, it feels but, good, do it. But I will, I will uh, 
fight back on that a little bit yeah. because how does the everyday person who's just trying to follow a regimen know if it's working or not? If it feels good in the moment, you're like, meh. I guess it, uh, I guess I I rolled up my back and I, I guess because it cracked, it needed to be cracked. Well, that's it. How do you know? Yeah, you, you you we don't do a before after and like okay, this is the delta. <laughs> we saw that okay, this change and and all these metrics and okay, my back is seventy three percent more limber after like we just don't have that we just don't have it and and so like how do you figure it out well guess what there's a lot of information out there you go with what works for you right okay so it's like if you do something you get better performance great that's an objective measure right right? so well not necessarily but you can say hey i jumped higher Mm. or or i or i was able to rotate my hip further right right so if you feel better that's subjective but if you actually have a measurement where you're like i was able to do this better or that better right and there's something measurable well it's probably a good thing for you right but it safer. could be attributed to so many other things because yes. no one's just doing one thing in isolation there and then know. checking it out. Like going back to your whole gut System. biome, yeah. gut biome <laughs> thing, right? Know. Like yeah. let's say you remove dairy yeah. from your diet yes. and, and, and you decide that, you know, I'm just going to cut dairy out completely mm-hmm. and you start feeling better. But at the same time, you cut grain out. And which one did it? You, you, so no one's testing these things in isolation. But I mean... Yep. I get what you're saying, and and I'm with you on it. I'm just no, trying to take just try try different things. What yeah. I'm saying is just try different things and see what and, works for and you. see what works for you, right? Love it because everyone is different. Yeah, and and so to have a cookie cutter, hey, like, you know, this this person says everybody should roll their their hamstrings. That's what everyone wants. Well, that's, that's what it. everyone wants is that one answer, and that but that that's it. that does not exist. And and that's where you have your your Instagram trainer that sends out a program, and it's cookie cutter, and that's <laughs> and that's exactly what they give you, right? Like they don't know what what things look like, and that's where you bring on a real professional, right? You you go to a doctor for you know you you've got an issue with your bladder, you go and get your analysis, right? Yeah. Well, if you have an issue somewhere else, like get it checked out. Like it's not it's not that hard. Otherwise, you simply are just guessing. Yeah. Right? Love it. And that applies to so many things as well, like massage balls. And you yep. know, to to be honest, like I didn't know if acupuncture mm-hmm. is is legitimate. Mm-hmm. But going For back sure. to what you do at, at Fortis, you have a a what 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 did you call it? The type of uh, it's with Western medicine, scientifically proven. It's kind of <laughs> a little more legit. Uh, how yep. how does that acupuncture work? And going back to my shoulder example, yep. you you diagnose it. You want to. Go and fix it, and now you you see that there's a compensation on the other side. My neck is raised or something. Yeah, you throw some needles in there. Is it like the same kind of acupuncture that people traditionally think of, or what's different? It can be right. Like a lot of these points do align in the same way, but the intentions a little bit different and the philosophy behind it, right? So it could be the depth of the needles differently. When when I'm needling people, I'm typically trying to create change in the nervous system so you put a needle in anywhere and you're going to create change because your body's picking up on that right there is truly a change but like if we're trying to fix your shoulder up and let's say you've got pain radiating down the arm well is it really your shoulder no probably not i'm going to be looking at neck more and there are so many times that i've had people come in with oh i've got a rotator cuff tear and it's hurt me for this long and i have to sit out this long or or labrum tear or any of these things and i i kind of just throw it away and say i don't well that's great. That's the what, but yeah. we, we need to figure out the why. The why. So if I throw needles in your neck, then the idea is that you have nerves running from your neck down into your shoulder, down into your arm. So I can influence that entire chain. Right. So it's much more efficient than just like figuring out, hey, you have a torn labrum. <laughs> okay, you have a torn labrum. Yeah. Great. Like, I, I'm but not what's gonna, the actual I, issue? What's the issue? Like, I'm yeah. not going to put needles in your labrum and magically hope that is it Is this the same thing as it, dry right? needling? So dry needling is just a term that's been coined, uh, again, a Western term to say, hey, we're taking needles, we're throwing them in. Typically dry needling is using like a bit of a plunger technique where you're going in and out of the tissue. Um, It's creating quite a bit of inflammation. So inflammation is not the devil like everybody thinks it is. We We want controlled inflammation in areas that we're trying to create change, right? Okay. If you've got inflammation in your bowel, then you have a problem, (laughs) but, but it like, but if you have inflammation in your shoulder, well, it has to be a controlled amount, right? 
So we're throwing those needles in, we're creating inflammation with the dry needling, but we're also doing that with, with uh, kind of the version that I'm using. It's just, again, I, I might dry needle for one thing, or uh, on the other side, I'm using some electricity through, okay. through the needles in other cases and stimulating those needles oh, so you actually you, you actually have a current running through you sometimes. Got it. You got it, and oh, different currents cool. for different issues. So, so one kind of tissue, like a, a capsule ligament kind of tissue, will react one way. Um, another tissue will like a muscular tissue will react a little bit differently right. nervous system tissue and I love needling scars it's one of my things I see a scar on somebody I typically am needling that because we hold so much with that scar yeah. we've compensated around that scar for for weeks months years whatever it is and so if we can get in and stir things up in there and change the neurology around that scar then we're going to create some pretty cool changes and I've been lucky enough to see those things. That's really cool, man. I've mm -hmm. had the dry needling done myself yes. in, in certain points. It hurts, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it, it, well, I wouldn't use the word hurt. Okay. It's just a weird discomfort. Yeah. And you're kind of just like, well, what's this doing? And then the muscle spasms. And then, well, it was my physio who did it. Yeah. it uh, ironically enough, at a Greco, like uh, one of those oh, uh, physio locations. Nice. And, um, yeah, she, she'd uh, throw it in, and then she'd get really happy when the muscle twitched. Right. And I never really fully understood that, and I don't really want to either, but I also do kind of <laughs> want to know, like, okay, why did my whole, like, shoulder just spaz, and what is this doing, and is there any legitness to this? Is this helping my issue? I don't, like, it just seems so weird to just stick needles in someone and... I just, you know, from just a... So with that method, right, when you get those twitches and whether it's from, you know, the, the acupuncture I'm doing or whether it's from dry needling, we're taking that needle, we're putting it where the nerve enters the muscle. Mm. Um, so a lot of times that's sitting on some of these uh, trigger points, if you will. About 80% of the time, those points are on, they, they're uh, alike. Okay. And, and so, like, if we're hitting that, you're taking something that's metal and you're sticking it next to uh, the nervous system, which conducts it electrochemical energy yeah. right so that's basically fork and the electrical socket right okay. so there there you're getting your, your titch your, your twitch you're getting your output from that right Love that. um and and so the changes that we can get from there we get like i said before we get a lot of increase in blood flow to that area so if we're trying to change what's going on with the tissue that's beneficial but also that nerve is changing mm. so let's let's say you've got uh, a nerve that's functioning uh not not so well and it's painful and it's tight and and that tissue just sucks generally right we can take needles and we can throw it in there and essentially where we have the frequency and we'll, we'll call it for a hundred for the sake of this right tightness and pain is going to be a hundred hertz yep. and uh, we go and we throw those needles in and we want to bring it back down to uh, an optimal level so we'll say three to ten hertz okay okay and so by throwing that in there we're going to change how that nerve functions. So if we could bring it away from that 100 hertz range, we can create change lower down, Damn. then that's going to start to function a lot better. That's serious. Man. It, it's pretty interesting. That yeah. is cool. So so it is kind of legit. I had no. <laughs> kind of like, legit. Yeah. I guess it's, I mean, it's, it, I, you know, to me, I was just thinking, All right, I, think, I guess it's doing something. Well, and that's it. And, but and that's cool. Have, the the yeah. nervous system uh, connection is something that we're not taught. And we're, we're never... Your doctor never sits down and tells you, "Well, listen, let me tell you about the the hurts of the the, the this and that." Like, oh yeah, it's it's really cool, man. I bet in an ideal world for you, you wish a client would would come up to you, and the injury hasn't happened yet, but they're like, "I'm trying to Absolutely. be preventative mm -hmm. about this thing mm -hmm. that I feel like could potentially happen." Right. Let's say, I. I'm just still going to continue going about my uh, strength training routine and I go to the gym. What kind of warm-up, what kind of uh, uh, mobility movements and, and, and patterns would you kind of prescribe to this kind of person? Right. So I, I like my baby movement stuff, right? My, my DNS stuff. Um, Walk so, me through some of those. Yeah, for sure. So I'd probably start you in a, a position that's – um, that's a little bit easier for, for your body. So, and by that, I mean, easier 
uh, in the sense that we can get a proper breath, we can get a proper brace in, right? So something on your back with your legs up, like relaxing positions where we can create those connections would be the start so that we can okay. get the core active. The first thing I do when I get into the gym would be that. Yes. Let's yeah. say throw my legs up on the wall, open up. Create put- some connection, like like for me it's like that mind muscle connection right okay. so you're talking about how effective your meditation is in in creating a little bit more connection to your own body mm-hmm. well that's what i tell patients to do right love it so sit back like whatever position it is maybe it's something on your back maybe it's something on your stomach there's usually a, a component of uh, breathing and working on that brace and when i'm talking about bracing um i like to use stuff like you know you just cough or or mm. uh you kind of activate the, the core that's it i that's guess that's right. what i'd call it in my term well that's it because yeah. because a lot of times people people's idea of core and i'm going to deviate for a second yeah. the idea of core is hey i'm going to flex my six pack right well that's ineffective because that's actually creating a yeah. little bit of flexion and we need that 360 degrees working so what about all the other stuff those back muscles need to be supported as oh, well yeah. so i get an exercise that does that first and then depending on what we've identified functionally i would get you working on a couple exercises so for for a shoulder thing off off the top it would be some stuff that gets the neck in a in a proper position mm-hmm. uh, gets the shoulder blade working because everybody's got shoulder blade well almost everybody has shoulder <laughs> blades but most people have shoulder blades and uh and and really if we if we have our shoulder blades working better then we're in much better condition to have the neck and the the actual shoulder itself working but because we don't see the shoulder blades people don't know they have them right so it's like oh i have a shoulder issue no you actually have a shoulder blade issue yeah but it's about looking at all of these different things so when i'm talking about uh, a joint problem or a, a region of pain i'm trying to explain to people that hey you have a lot of different stuff in there and we're just trying to make most of it work well yeah right which means that if you have that rotator cuff injury you have that labrum injury that's okay you know, those pieces are not going to work for us. But what about the pec muscle? What about the rear yeah. delt? What about the, the serratus? What about, you know, the, the deep cervical flexors? Like all these other things we can optimize to get you a bigger picture. So, Love it. so I, I try to build uh, for my athletes specifically uh, a little bit of a movement flow. Uh, so they would go in, they'd work on their breath, and that would be the, the meditative movement, meditative part. And then we go into a flow that actually – uh, works off of their imbalances. So if you've got a shoulder thing, I'm going to get you doing some neck retraction, moving the neck around in, in a certain way. Then I would get the shoulder blade moving. Then I would get the whole system working, right? Mm. So if we want a shoulder to work well, we need the hand working well mm. because our hand contact on the ground or our hand contact on a bar is actually going to dictate how the shoulder works in a lot of ways too. It's very true. And you could see that clearly when you've got a thicker barbell yeah. versus a thinner one. And I, I feel that when, when I'm doing certain exercises. But yeah, continue. No, and, and that's it. So even like we take a push-up, for example, right? So if I'm placing my hands on the ground and, and everybody can try this, on their own, like you put your hand down on the ground, are your fingers going to be really, really tight together? Or are they going to be spread out? Uh. It, when you go to to drop down into your push up, is your thumb lifting off? Is the index finger, you know, knuckle lifting off? And those are common things that I see where people are loading the outside of their hand a lot more. Uh. Well, that's going to influence how the elbow works. That's going to influence how the shoulder works. That's going to influence where the neck goes, as well as our stability, right? That's crazy, man. Yeah, so so this DNS stuff is a little bit complex, but at the same time, it's going back to basics, right? It is. Back to baby basics. And I I'm 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 loving this, dude. This is <laughs> this is amazing because for for so much of your life, any exercise or anything that you're told or coached or anything that people are kind of told, this is how you do it. It's a get things done mentality. Right. It's at any cost doesn't matter do the Mm push-up get down and give me the Mm push-up it's like all right some people will be out here people will be up here yeah and 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 this is not to knock greco but this is something that i had an issue with Mm -hmm. when i was at the gym is you have one trainer and almost you you could have up to 30 40 people in a class Mm -hmm. and you're looking around and you're seeing maybe even half of them do it horribly wrong Mm -hmm. any exercise Mm -hmm. at any given time based on speed let's get this done Mm -hmm. let's get and this is not just greco this is crossfit this is football 
coaches yeah. telling this is gym class this is everything yeah hard it's, and fast it's this hard and fast get things done mentality mm-hmm. as opposed to hey let's take a step back let's learn how to do this fucking with perfect form first mm-hmm. whatever like you know and and what that is for you individualized because of your compensations and whatnot how you can do this best you know so, some people might have to go a little bit more in right, to protect exactly. their shoulder. Yep. Some people, you know, it's okay out here, but not here or not like, you know. So And and that's it. Just like uh, for the for the average goer of the gym that are, that are doing these hit classes that are doing CrossFit, it's just like, okay, well, if you're having pain in one place, then try another place. Like we can use those compensa- compensations and we can use pain as a guide oh, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. But what, what I try and teach is slow things down. So if you're somebody that loves the hit classes, you love CrossFit, that's great. But take the time to do a little bit of the other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So take your time, work through a certain movement. If you're doing a class and you're like, hey, I really have trouble with my squat. I wonder what's going on with that. Well, you know what? You can go down and just hang out and look in the mirror and say, what am I, what am I doing here? Yeah. And some people have that awareness to know how to do it but but that's where somebody like me obviously comes in yeah and and really what i'm trying to do it, the movement doesn't have to be perfect it, it's not about being perfect mm-hmm. it's about it works for the entire system where this where it's not creating pain right so great analogy uh that uh, my girlfriend actually came up with so props to her on that <laughs> she said it, it it's really simple it's like when you're you're starting out with your license, right? So I, I'm trying to get my license. I'm, you know, 15, 16 years old, whatever age it is now, right? And I'm very cautious. I pull up to a stop sign. I'm looking both ways. I'm, you know, signaling. I'm doing all these things. And I'm very, very conscious. Again, we're going back to awareness and consciousness of it. And, and, and I'm very aware of these things. Then we get our license. A couple of years go by. And people are switching lanes without looking. Um, you know, they're, they're doing all kinds of silly shit when they're driving, eating subway and whatever <laughs> else they're doing. Right. Absolutely. And, and so we kind of get away from this whole consciousness thing. And, and so what I try and do with people is just bring them back and, Hey, let's create some awareness around this movement. And, and so that pain is your accident yeah. and and then you go back and you try and okay well you know what i'm gonna shoulder check again and i'm gonna rear view mirror oh, yeah. um, check and and it's i'm not gonna eat my subway and or yeah. drink my coffee while i'm driving i'm actually gonna pay attention to what i'm doing instead of just trying to smash it right yeah and uh, for anyone listening Let's do that before you get into the action. Yeah, there you go, right? <laughs> you know? Let's Nobody, try. who does that, though? Let's, it, let's be honest, it, right? It, it's tough, though, yeah. but, man, like, if you if you can, if you're going and squatting now, and let's yeah. say, you know, you're feeling like, oh, man, I don't know, my, I'm, I'm going too low, or uh, my my bum's feeling weird when I, and, and I'm shifting, and I'm yeah. my back's turning, or something weird's going on here, but I could still do it. Right. I could still get it done. Yeah. I'd say most people would just continue doing it. Well, they do, right? And and that's because maybe they don't have pain. Maybe they're realizing that there's something that's a little bit off, but they don't have pain. So yeah. they're like, hey, I, I'm fine, though. I'm just going to keep doing this. Yeah. Just because something is is not painful doesn't mean it's not pretty messed up, right? Yeah. And so that ties back into the whole metabolic thing. Maybe you are sleeping well. Maybe you're doing everything else right, and you're not feeling pain, but you've got this dysfunction that could ultimately result in that when you hit that yeah <laughs> when you hit that point when you hit that threshold exactly. right i don't know why i'm trying to think of ways to solve this problem what your shoulder it, still no 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 <laughs> not not just me just in, in general yeah imagine you go into any gym now yeah you got one guy to 20 people yeah. but imagine if at least you had like three or four guys right walking around hey hey they're just queuing yeah. Hey, check that. Uh, uh, watch this. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to sit here and solve the problem, but th- it's a problem because so mm-hmm. many people are now told that hey, you gotta, you gotta go exercise. You gotta go fast. You gotta do this. You gotta yeah. boom, 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 and they're, they're gonna end up seeking you. Well, <laughs> well, it's tough, but it's you know it, it's slowing things down. And if you're gonna jump into the gym, I would say like try and start looking at how you're moving and maybe if you're going to jump into a situation where you're doing some of these high intensity training sessions like 
trying to build your way into those things yep. instead of just like trying to keep up with everybody. It comes down to ego. You know, it it, really it, does. it's just like it, if I can check my ego and walk in and just say, Hey, you know, the, these people are doing it 15, oh, yeah. 15 reps, uh, uh, you know, as hard as they possibly can. Maybe I'm just going to do five or maybe I'm going to do 10 and slow things down Absolutely. because that's, what's best for me. But a lot of people want those results so, so, yeah, so man. fast, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's comparing yourself to them as well. That's it. Let's switch gears a bit and talk about your uh, Profectus seminars. Yeah. Talk to us about that and uh, uh, what you've got going with all that. Is it a separate company? Is it you know, What do you got going on there? Yeah, so it's its own entity. I came up with uh, Profectus. Uh, just based on a problem that I, I didn't find there was a lot of real good quality seminars for healthcare providers coming to Ottawa and, and, and the area. You know, there's lots of stuff in Toronto. There was, when I was studying in the States, there was tons of stuff in, in obviously New York, Chicago, Boston, but I get to Ottawa and I'm like, Hey, what's going on here? Um, so that, uh, Perfectus came to be, uh, I was actually playing rugby in Dubai when I when I started Profactus and um, was playing in the World Sevens and broke my collarbone. And okay. uh, this was actually while I was practicing. So I was like, oh, shit, I have to go back Monday and practice, but my collarbone's pretty <laughs> fucked up. So I need to start working on something. So it was a little bit out of necessity for myself as well, where I needed to come up with some ideas to generate some income. Um, so I started up a website from Dubai and I started working on these things, um, and, and marketing different courses. And so I, I essentially market, um, these courses that are things that I would like to see. Obviously I'm a little selfish in that way that I'm bringing things in that I want to see, but at the same time, it's stuff that is not making it to Ottawa, um, and things that that people are asking for, but don't really know what the actual course is. So I'd have a group of trainers say, Hey, I'm really looking for something that has to do with assessment and, and injuries, but I don't really know what to do. So then I would go out and I'd find that course and, mm. and, and work to bring it here. Okay. So you're kind of you're like almost the liaison and then also yes. making the course happen here. Yes. And these are only live, like seminar kind of thing, conferences? Right, that right now there, yes. Okay, that's it. super yeah. cool, man. So yeah, hands-on stuff. You got it. So then is it uh, mostly targeted towards people in the health and fitness field or could it be anybody just come and... Yeah, it, it's targeted towards health and fitness professionals. Okay, cool. Um, at this time, uh, we've had a couple uh, smaller just... Uh, uh, seminar workshops that have been for general public. So um, I, I brought a neuroscientist in from uh, Western and, and he gave it a, a talk and it was just health minded individuals that were there. So that was really great. Um, and there's been a couple other ones like that. We bring in the Wim Hof method. And, right. And That's super cool. Anybody man. can really show up to that one yeah. as well. Um, and, and so there's been a little bit of both, but the focus was towards healthcare and healthcare providers. I love it, man. Um, if you can believe it, we've, we're over an hour, definitely over nice. an hour now, and it's been a great conversation so far. Still have a few questions for you, yeah. um, but uh, talk to me about Fortis and you know what it stands for and how you came up with the idea and how you made it happen. So Fortis is an acronym. Uh, obviously, it, it means strength in Latin. Uh, I like my Latin, uh, Fortis Perfectus, but uh, Fortis is Function, Objective Results, Training, Innovation, Synergy. Love okay? it. So function, obviously, we, we've been talking about function all day, so I don't have to reiterate that one too yeah. much. Objectives, obje excuse me, objective results, we touched on as well, where I'm trying to look at change and say, hey, am I actually creating change here? So if, if you're going in and seeing a, a therapist, whoever they are, right, and you're just filling out forms and saying, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Well, that's great, but where's the actual change, yeah. right? So looking at, hey, there's this amount of rotation in this joint, and now there's this much, like that's a little bit more of an objective measure oh, yeah. and, and, and just trying to f figure out things that are actually going to help or um, you know, jumping higher or, or running faster. These are all objective me measures. So with every patient, I try and lay out a plan where it's like, okay, these are the objective measures that we're looking at this is what I want to accomplish. And then we just knock those off as we go through treatments, right? Love it. Um, training, like training ties into uh, obviously showing people 
like how to do things. And I'm coming from that personal training and strength and conditioning kind of background. Yeah. So, so it's education in a lot of senses, innovation. I like to bring together these concepts that again are, are not being used thoroughly. So there's not a lot of DNS being done in, in Ottawa right now. Um, and, uh, it's it's out there but it's starting to build up steam more and more and more so that's where the innovation is coming in and and perfectus ties into that innovation side of it because i'm able to bring in the leading edge stuff from around the world you know dns is from the Prague school and yeah, absolutely which is there. a really prestigious school for people who who it's haven't awesome. heard it it's, yeah. it's like good on you man yeah congratulations yeah, on cool. that that's super cool, man. And then synergy is the last one. So it's just bringing together different methods. So yes, I'm a chiropractor, but am I just going to crack your back? No, I'm going to bring together ideas that are coming from osteopathy, coming from nutrition, uh, you know, bringing all these concepts together and molding them together into what is your treatment versus just like, hey, here's your problem. Let's treat it. Yeah. See you later. You know? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's where Fortis came from. And, and, uh, Fortis, I started up in 2015, 2015. When, uh, when I graduated. So that's been an ongoing thing. And Sweet, man. Yeah. And uh, where can people find it? Where can people find you? So right now we've got uh, a permanent spot at uh, the Greco Blossom Park. So mm -hmm. that's in the south end there. Good. And and so I've opened up in, in facilities where uh, there are active individuals, which is great. And then I've got a satellite set up uh canada south uh, greco as well and and the hope is for expansion now now that i'm looking at bringing on some other individuals to help me out with this endeavor love it man well yeah. you have me as a client for yeah, sure thanks buddy um i have a few more questions for you so um how do you feel about uh, stem cells how do i feel about it yeah because okay. uh, i've heard about people getting stem cell shots and then miraculously their shoulders better yeah. and i'm pumped I can't wait till that comes to so Canada. So we're talking about PRP, right? Yeah, or, well, or, like, yeah, yeah, like the the shots or, or, or yeah. whatever it would be. Uh, I've heard the word stem cells thrown around, so. Yeah, so so right now they're already doing that, and, and I'm just going to say that stem cell injection is not in my scope of practice. Okay. Um, but the knowledge is out there, so I'm going to speak to that. Yeah. So with, um, they've been doing PRP injections now for a while, so they take your, take blood out of you, they spin it down, they take out the, the, uh, the platelets. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so they re-inject that into the joint. So the idea is that uh, those cells are going to help to create some, um, some healing around that area. Um, so there's lots of studies now that are being conducted with that and, and um, actively at many of the universities and, um, and, and facilities, they're, they're monitoring these things. Um, so you can take a look at some of the research there. It's, it's out there, so I, yeah. I'm I'm not I, I, I can't speak to the yeah, efficacy yeah, and what I've seen, but you know, really for me, it's like if you are injecting something into that joint, you are creating inflammation, regardless of what you think. And, right. and prolotherapy and a lot of these therapies. So A, you're injecting something in, you're creating inflammation. Inflammation is good for for a joint, like right? You if, said. if you've got an injury. Mm -hmm. So that's already beneficial. And on top of that, you're probably gonna be resting after. Yeah. So also very beneficial from a metabolic perspective, right? right? So you've already got two things that are working for you that are, have nothing to do with the actual injection. Yeah. And then you're adding what's going on in the injection there, right? Yeah. Um, so there's some other stuff out there that is stem cell related uh, that's being done in Europe. Um, not Panama. Ha it hasn't quite Panama. Sure, you heard go to Panama and get I, some stuff. There. I heard yeah. it's a big thing down there. People go down yeah. to Panama and get stem cells yeah, shot into like, their knees and stuff. Yeah, and there's mutagens. Famous and, uh, celebrities yeah. and stuff are doing this. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of different stuff out there in Canada. Like it's not not happening. It's not quite. there yet. Not yet, but I, I can see it coming more and more. And if and it PRP. does, would you add it to your scope? Uh, if it, let's say uh, it, it's all uh, it checks out, it's yeah. all good. You're you're on the cutting edge. You're a pretty innovative guy. You know it's one of the it's one of the things in Fortis. Yeah. Would you would you throw stem cells into your uh, practice? If it hit my scope, yeah, uh, then absolutely I would. But uh, the whole injection of stuff is not really in the Cairo scope right fair, now. Fair, fair. But you know, if, if I had a team of people, I would certainly be bringing somebody on. To That's do super that cool. Way. Didn't want to put you on the spot. No, I just thought I'm good, it was. Man. I just thought it's kind of cool. Oh, I think it's great. Yeah. You know, it, as long as it's effective, and that's it. But, but big picture, like 
what we need to do is restore movement patterns. Yeah. So you can get all the injections you want into that tissue, but if you're not fixing your movement pattern, then you're going back and you're wrecking that tissue again. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, you can't just keep getting that done, man. You got to, yeah. you got to fix the under the why, the why. you got to get to the you why. I love you it. it. You've worked with a lot of, uh, professional athletes, uh, you know, Nate Behar, Red Blacks, uh, you mentioned Claude Giroux. I don't know if you work with him uh, on a uh, training basis or whatnot, but you've worked with some big names, to say the least. How's that been? What's that like? You know, you want to help these guys get back to the action, but it's also probably kind of interesting to get to know these people and their mindset. What are some of the things, like, you've gotten from that? what have i gotten like they're they're awesome to work with because they want to get better their their bodies are their way of life um so very very motivated and and i've never met an athlete that has been like oh no i i don't care i'm hurt and i just give up like mm. that's not the way it goes sometimes there are individuals that don't want to do what it takes to to get to that next level and that's where working with them to understand what it's going to take can be a, a little bit challenging but for the most part like awesome experience worth working with these guys and and gals and um and when people are motivated it's just so much easier yes yeah. because well, they're you just like be, more because yeah, you got to be able to put the work in when i'm not seeing you yeah, and, and go and take this stuff away and do it. Well, that's it. And, and like whether you're a weekend warrior or a professional athlete, you know, you're going to have similar injuries. It's just because the load is so much higher on the professional athletes that they're getting injuries that kind of come up um, a little bit more. And, and they can be dealt with in a similar way um, as, as just a weekend warrior. But uh, definitely the mentality helps. You yep. know, if you're somebody that's, uh, you know, sitting at a desk all day, and then you're going home and doing CrossFit. Yeah. Um, it, it's a little different than if, you know, 24 hours a day you're, you're eating, breathing, sleeping, success in whatever sport it is. Absolutely. So that's, that's, that's the big difference. And, you know, I, I really thoroughly enjoy working with them. It's, it's a pleasure. I love it, man. What else do you got going on right now? I mean, uh, you mentioned that you're involved with uh, Piro Grill in Canada. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit, and you know, because it's not all just sport with you, huh? Yeah. So, <laughs> so Pyro Grill is um, Pyro. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, it's all good. So they're uh, they're Mediterranean uh, kind of fusion based thing. So if you have you had Chipotle before, you've been to yeah. Chipotle. So it's kind of like a Mediterranean Chipotle kind of thing. Okay. But um, Greek kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, I, I got involved with them just through walking in there almost every day for a little while. Um, so I, I had myself actually some uh, metabolic issues that came up, some autoimmune issues that, that popped up about a year ago and um, went on a pretty restricted eating uh, regimen. And what was that like? What do you think it was like? <laughs> it was hell. So, but you know, like sun, yeah, it was hard. It was hard. Depending but, uh, on what you had to do. Did, well, that's it. Did like, you have to cut out certain types of foods completely? Well, that's it. I, I was did it something. eating window or like? All of the above. Okay. So, and, and that ties into the biohacking. I, I essentially biohacked my way out of that. Um, so I was doing everything from the intermittent fasting to, to like, you know, a 72 hour fast to try and like Damn. nuke my, my immune system to get it to calm down. Um, but what, what I was finding is it was hard it, as a, as an active professional, if I wasn't like meal prep to a T, I was having a hard time finding stuff, but luckily, you know, pyro was down the street. So I would hit that up often mm. and, and became friends with the owner, Tom and, and, uh, and so I kind of got in back in them when they opened up their Canada location. And there you go. Just like awesome stuff. It's a awesome. great story, man. Lam lamb meatballs are like, cool. <laughs> yeah, solid. That's solid. healthy too, man. Like yeah. Just getting into straight meat and, and vegetables. And I've always found that diet. If I need like a, like a cheat meal or like yeah. something to eat out, if not a cheat meal, but something to eat out, but yeah. still maintain my health. Yeah go with that well that's it and and that's what i was rocking and and you don't feel like like a bag of shit at the end of it right <laughs> like you it. actually feel good you can go and work out after yeah. and and so just keeping the inflammation low was a big part of what i was doing with that and okay and it was it was essential for me getting better so when they went to open the canada location then tom and i had a discussion and essentially came on uh, just helping in the background marketing and and uh 
repping it as a, a health brand. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, since you've, I, I mean, I assume gotten better and over this uh, issue, this health issue, mm-hmm. um, have you continued some of these diet patterns? And is there something you do, you know, to this day that you know, keep things in Tons. check? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tons well, of things. Give, yeah. give, a, give us just some of them. And, and don't worry, doctor, these are, this is not a prescription <laughs> disclaimer out there. Just tell us what you do. So, so what I had going on was I had a bout of uh, psoriasis that came about. So everybody, pretty much everybody out there has the ability to have these autoimmune <coughs> flare-ups in one, one way or another. And so for me, I, I had the pleasure of dealing with uh, psoriasis and, and a psoriatic condition. Um, so it basically felt like my skin was melting off and it looked like that too for, for a period of time. And, uh, I went to a medical doctor and, uh, they told me I would have to do chemo or go on a drug called methyltrexate, which is a pretty scary drug that I've heard about changes this. your DNA. Um, and I basically told the doctor to go fuck themselves yeah. because that, that was it's not something I was going to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so it really, it really put my beliefs to the test, right? Where I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I believe in all this stuff that, that I'm preaching every day. Like I got to give her, right? So, so just dive into stuff. And I had some help um, going through and figuring out what was going to work for me. So, you know, I did a lot of research, but at the same time, I needed help too. So I started off with um, the AI paleo, so anti anti inflammatory anti-inflammatory paleo diet, um, also known as the autoimmune diet, uh, paleo, sorry. And so that is a really strict version of paleo. So paleo is your, you know, basically eat whatever, um, you know, lives. Okay. <laughs> so it actually has cells. Okay. Um, so things that crawl on the, on the ground and grow in the tree and that kind of thing. Um, but then you restrict it even more. So taking away some of the nightshades, so like eggplant, uh, tomatoes, a lot of these things that grow at night that so create that Tom Brady, in, Tom Brady kick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was pretty no. heavy. So, yeah. so I've maintained aspects of that, but I coupled that with intermittent fasting. Right. Um, and how, what was your window? Like it was a six hour, year six window. hour. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you just skip breakfast, six. uh, you skip breakfast. First meal of the day would be about. 12 yeah so i was doing uh around one or two i was i was doing uh my eating window okay. and then eating you know dinner and then going to bed which you know very very difficult to do when you're working and trying yeah. to eat and what have you but um you know it, it, the the medical system essentially told me that it was going to be 12 months with with treatment which was this methotrexate or chemo and I cleared things up in three months using wow. these methods. So, you know, I, I did a combo of, and, and again, this is where the biohacking came in. This is, this is it. Like I just, I wanted more, like I, I wasn't happy with where I was at. There's information out there. You know what? Maybe, you know, the medical system doesn't necessarily say this is approved or, or FDA approved or whatever it is, but you owe it to yourself to keep going out there and looking for those answers. Yeah. Because what, sitting at home and being in pain and being miserable yeah. and that kind of thing is not an option and it wasn't an option for me. So I just went out there and I looked for it. So it was a combo of the eating um, slash not eating with the, with the uh, intermittent fasting. Um, I was doing... Uh, th- 72 hour fast once once every four weeks okay i was doing that uh, just water no coffee did you have so coffee I, I was actually doing bone broth bone broth okay yes have you do- have you do- i didn't do one? that no no uh, I, I do the intermittent fasting but I, nice. i've heard about the bone broth yeah. and i'm like i'm good thanks. it's it's great for the gut right <laughs> yeah. so so that's that's the big thing a lot of these um, inflammatory conditions, autoimmune things have a lot of connection to the gut. Mm-hmm. Um, so working on fixing that and I was taking a, a boatload of different supplements as well to try and fix that up. Um, just to replenish what, what I didn't have. And when I had this, this, uh, autoimmune thing come up, you know what? I was treating my body like shit. You know, it was, I was working crazy hours and not eating enough, uh, you know, too much coffee, not enough sleep. And, and that's where I ended up. And, and so through the process of using these things, these, these biohacking methods and took my sleep really seriously and, 
doing the Wim Hof method, doing the cold showers, right? <laughs> or ice baths, right? Love it, man. Um, I started doing that, that recently. Yeah. Only a couple of days now. Yeah. So I'm still new to it. I'm a hot shower guy yeah. my whole life. Yeah. But recently I've been taking the cold showers yeah. after the sauna. Good. And I think it's the closest thing to taking a drug I've ever done ever. <laughs> it's, it's pretty pure amazing. Pure euphoria. It is. For the rest of the, like it is. That's yeah. it. And and so the Wim Hof method couples that with breathing now. So mm-hmm. you're saying you get into the meditation. So that's something to look at where you're just coupling those different pieces together. Love it. Um, but uh, you know, I, I put all those things together into a little uh, recipe for myself, and and that was that was quite effective at getting back on track. And sounds like you did a hard reset on your body and hard and, and, reset, and, it, buddy. and it worked man yeah yep. i'm really happy to hear that Thank dude that's yeah. that's incredible um the intermittent fasting is really interesting to me and mm. uh i'm not technically doing it because i drink the coffee in the morning right and i put a dash of oat milk in it so okay. automatically i'm kicked out of a actual facet thing. state yeah but to me for all intents and purposes i'm not eating the breakfast in the morning most of the time and mm-hmm. i love that window well, that's it, it yeah. and it's about what works for you, right? Yeah. So if, if that if that way works for you, yeah. but for people that are out there and that's all they're doing, I get a lot of people come in and they tell me they're doing intermittent fasting, but, then but it's McDonald's for lunch and dinner. <laughs> well, well, it's that, or they're doing intermittent fasting because oh, I don't want to eat breakfast or I don't have time to eat breakfast. Oh, well. So they're just like, oh, validating themselves. I'm, I'm mm. going to do intermittent fasting because it, it works for me. And it's a it's real conscious not. thing. You really do yeah. feel it. And But once you so get why? used to it, though, yeah, I feel like you actually feel like you have more energy mm-hmm. because you don't get that uh, the hunger pangs or, mm-hmm. or a crash. You almost turn into a bit of a robot where it's like food is fuel. I must eat now. Yeah. It's, I guess I should eat. Oh, it's one? Oh, 32 o'clock like sometimes that happens once you get into it but yeah yeah. that's it and and what you're really trying to do is if you're getting a whole bunch of gut inflammation when you're eating and and the different things are are setting stuff off then you're reducing the amount of inflammation in a given day by restricting that eating window so for a lot of people just that can can really be beneficial yeah man just giving your digestive system a break exactly as opposed to just constantly snacking or or late night yeah. food and I, I'm, I'm guilty of this you know yeah. on a night out or something you, you get a put in mm-hmm. or you get something <laughs> or you, know, you if, if a, slice, a couple slices of pizza or something and then next thing you know the next day you feel like dog shit yeah you're like what did i do yeah what, what have i done yeah and guilt <laughs> but 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 that's that's got to be tough too because you probably w- were not able to drink on this or, or do a lot of social uh you know, kind of things while you were fasting because that's one thing i found very difficult about that window is if i wanted to let's say go out on a friday night or something Mm -hmm. that would mean i can't have my first meal until like four o'clock and i think that's why a lot of people choose not to go that direction uh, you know get really like harsh with their eating is because of the social aspect and and i run into that every day where it's like you know what if you can choose to do this then that's better oh well you know i always go to this bar with my friends every friday night and do like, you know chicken wing and <laughs> and beer thing well it's like what are you willing to sacrifice well that's it and it, does it work for you mm. well if it works for you great but if it doesn't work for you well move on find yeah. so, find fi- find something that works for you right and, and that's the most powerful thing i think a lot of people are not willing to make those sacrifices, yeah. but they want the change regardless. Right. This has been an amazing conversation so far. I'm going to ask you one last question before I hit our lightning round and we ask a few questions to end it off. Mm-hmm. You, you're an educated guy. You're big on education. You, you are constantly learning. What are some kind of non-formal ways you try to learn? What are some podcasts you listen to, even documentaries or, or whatever? Yeah, so uh, I I kind of pivot all over the place. So if I'm looking for something specific, then I'll just jump around on a podcast. Like I, I dig Tim Ferriss and and, uh, Ferris. and and like his stuff. Yeah, we were talking about that before. So there's yeah. tons of stuff on there, and and uh, a lot of the concepts he brings about, I'll dive into that after the fact, right? And I think that's what podcasts are about. Ultimately, is giving you a couple ideas and giving you some direction on on hey there are these things out there and then you figure out what you want from yeah it, right yeah but you're talking about how the average person figures out hey how do i learn this information well podcasts are a great way of doing that because you get little pieces of that's that how i learned you can do it in the shower i listen to podcasts in the shower in the car whatever yeah. right 
Um, so I find that's that's a great way to, to, to dive into things. Um, and uh, there's a couple apps out there that are really cool for people that are into research. Um, Mendeley is one of them. And and uh, you can actually program in the types of things you're looking at. So I, I like neuroscience, so I'm going to type in neurology, right, or neuroscience. And, and it's actually going to send me articles every time something's published or something Love comes that. into the mix where it's like, here's this neuroscience article, here's this neuroscience article. So that's, that's where I, I like to get some of my information from, and I, I try to read up on on what's new and and not always things that i'm i'm into <coughs> as well so you know i i'm not a cardiology guy but i want to know how these dis- different systems function relative to so if i find something about exercise and and cardiology i'm, I'm going to dive into those areas as well so just jump on and start pivoting and i love it man yeah you're really living the systems approach this, <laughs> is, <laughs> this has been incredible man um tell people before i let you go where they can find you and uh, you know your website and 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 your Instagram handle and, and that kind of stuff, and then we'll dive into our lightning round. Yeah, so I'm uh, Fortis Spine is the uh, encompassing uh, name there. So www.fortisspine.com. Uh, on uh, on the gram, it's Fortis underscore Spine. Uh, yeah, Facebook, yeah, same yeah. thing. Type it in, right? Like, yeah, so you'll find there's it. There's different things in there. <laughs> uh, just Google it. You'll find yeah, it, Yeah, you'll guys. find it, exactly. All right, first question. What's one piece of equipment you recommend everybody, no matter what level of their mobility, incorporate into their life? Oh, one piece of equipment. Or an exercise. This is something that you know, almost everybody can do or should try to do well that's it i i like the breathing thing so trying to get your breathing under control there you go um you know creating that 360 brace is important perfect uh what's one exercise you want um you want to stop seeing people do because of just how horribly you've seen them do it or they have to come see you because they've damaged their body so badly doing it yeah walking lunges yeah, walking there, lunges there's a lot of people doing walking lunges out there and and it's just oh man it, it's like <laughs> it, it's like <laughs> you, you take a you take a complex dynamic movement and you just do it over and over and over again to fatigue and like knees it, going past just, outside well it's there's there's just so much to it right mm-hmm. so you can you can use a lunge and people hate lunges too yeah. so so that's what's funny about it is People hate lunges, but they're doing walking lunges. They're doing 100 reps at a time. Yeah. It's just form goes out the window. So it's just that reference I so made to drive in a car. Up, man. Uh, that's it. Slow, yeah. your, slow your lunges down. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, if you could work with one professional athlete who you have not yet had the chance to work with, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. So coming from rugby, I would love to work with some of the the, the big names in rugby for sure. You know, South Africa and and uh, and New Zealand have some some uh, pretty amazing athletes on there. So you could pick any one of those individuals. No, you I'd, could I'd love pick. To, I'd love to dive into one of those. Just pick uh, one, man. <laughs> so the seven guys are are pretty cool. So I actually had the the pleasure of meeting. Uh, Wow, you're putting me on the spot. I really am. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is when you were playing at Dubai with the Sevens, right? When yeah. I was when I was in Dubai. So uh, his last name is Brown. Okay, so we could uh, come back to it. No, it's all good. So uh, I met him, and he's an uh, just awesome, awesome dude. Oh yeah. So uh, would would very much like to work with him. That'd be awesome, yeah. man. Um, who is your role model? Who is my role model? This or has the, been yeah. your role model? Yeah, so I, I've had teachers that have certainly influenced me in, in very positive ways over the years. So if I'm talking from a clinical standpoint, um, there's uh, a doc, uh, sports medicine doctor out of McMaster acupuncture program, um, Alejandro Eloriega, who's just a uh, just phenomenal practitioner and just his demeanor is hilarious. Um, Shout out Alejandro, man. That's awesome. Go. Yeah. Great answer. Um Last and final question today. What is the best advice you've ever gotten? Slow down. Slow down. (laughs) Love it, man. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for coming on yeah, the thanks, podcast. I had a lot of fun today. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we almost did two hours, which Holy is shit, nuts. Eh? No, no, this is great, <laughs> dude. That means like people are going to get a lot of value from this. Uh, just remember, guys, it's not that deep. I'm here with Dr. John Steen. Go check him out. And yeah, let's get it. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. I really enjoyed that conversation and I hope you did as well. If you're getting any kind of value from this content and want to help me make it grow, please share on all social media, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, contribute to my Patreon page, and check out my website. It's not that deep podcast.com.